Hi there, my name is Oliver. I'm the founder and CEO of Joe's Blooms. This company was set up in 2021 to help people comply with the new biodiversity net gain requirements. We do this by offering a digital tool which provides an end-to-end -end solution. Everything that you need to complete the biodiversity net gain process and produce all the documents you need to submit to the local planning authority. No delays, no expensive consultants, no compromise on standards. Let me tell you a little bit about how it works. As we set out on our website, with Joe's Blooms, you get all the documents you need to comply with B&G. First, you will receive the metric sheet. This is the key statutory document that has to be provided to a local authority, setting out the biodiversity value of the site before development and after development. All values will be filled in correctly. Next, you will receive a biodiversity game plan, setting out your baseline and your intended works in the prescribed format. Finally, you will receive the habitat plans, the maps that show the baseline habitats and the post-development habitats. After you have created your account, you can create a new project by simply pressing the yellow button. Start by naming your project and then pressing the get started button. All the BNG steps are now set out in a clear logical order. Press continue. You'll be invited to enter in a postcode or a grid reference for your site. If you don't have either, simply click the blue button and you'll be taken through to a screen where you can drop a pin in the map. On the next screen, simply indicate where your site is by clicking once on the map. You can move the pin either by clicking and dragging it to anywhere else or indeed by simply clicking somewhere else on the map. You will then be asked what kind of development you have. Select residential for dwelling houses, commercial for commercial build, or if it's not clear, select something else. You'll then be asked some specific questions, and then to select the right local planning authority. You'll now be asked to draw the red line external boundary of your site. This can be done with the draw tools, which allows you to draw a simple polygon, and also to make use of the edit function which allows you to adjust any point on the red line and to create new points as well. Using this tool, it's very simple to create a very complicated polygon. There are also undo and redo functions, so if you make a mistake, don't worry. You can also use the measure tool to make sure that the lengths of your red line are exactly correct. The Select OS Features tools allows you to simply click and select land parcels based on OS master data. In other words, you can draw an accurate red line in a matter of seconds. Next, there is an automated search of priority habitats in the local area and a confirmation that you are able to use the tool. Once that is complete, you'll be invited to purchase your Joe's Blooms report. On the next stage, we will go through stakeholder engagement. The VNG tool will tell you who the local stakeholders are you may wish to contact and even draft a suggested email for you. Next, we will do a full search of local nature recovery strategies and guide you through the process of dealing with any habitat degradation that has taken place in the last few years. Finally, we comply with GDPR and get all necessary consent. Next, we provide you with the tools that you or the best placed person on your team need to do an on-site habitat check. Simply select the right broad category of habitat and then select the habitat which best describes what you find on your site. Clicking on an option will provide detailed description and other tools are available to help you make the right selection. Once selected, you will return to the map screen. Here, you'll be able to easily draw in the habitat parcel. You can again do this by simply drawing a polygon or, by using the Select OS features, you can easily select an entire portion of the map to be the selected habitat type. You can also edit this very easily by using the Edit option. And once again, there is an Undo and Redo feature. Once completed, simply upload a photo of your habitat, and this will be added at the right file size to the Excel sheet.
you now just need to keep adding habitat parcels until the entire red line area is covered as indicated at the bottom of the screen. To add more parcels, simply press the yellow button and select the next habitat type. Repeat the same process as before until you have filled the entire red line diagram area with different habitat types. You can use tools like autofill to make the job even faster. Hedgerows and waterways are drawn in as linear features and are done as simple lines. Next, we guide you through administrative details, entering in the information on the developer, the responsible person, and the competent person. We make this as easy as possible, allowing you to copy over relevant information from previous fields. The whole process should take less than 10 minutes, and information is on hand if you need any help. Then we ask you when the site survey took place, and a few other basic questions. Next, we add in the intended works. These are the things that you are planning to build or change on the site. It's the same process as the baseline, except here we bring out to the top the habitat types which will most likely be used in intended works for buildings or gravel drives. Let's do a simple building. You select the right habitat type and press continue. You can now import your site plans by clicking on upload plans and dragging in the file. Once you've confirmed that you have the right file uploaded, you can simply position it in the correct place, rotate to the right orientation, and then scale so that it accurately reflects your intended plans. You can use the measuring tool to make sure that you have achieved the correct scale. Once you have uploaded your site plans, you can use this as a tool to trace over and set out what your intended works actually are. Simply repeat this process to add in all of your intended works on the site. Once completed, you'll be able to mark out any area of hedgerow or waterway that is going to be destroyed. Now you will see your biodiversity score. The top boxes indicate how much biodiversity has been lost and what net gain you need to achieve. So in this case, our area has gone down by 5.56%, hedgerows by 24.8%, only both to reach 10%. Enhancement options show what you can do with the existing habitats in order to create a higher score. Creation is what options there are for creating brand new habitats. And offsite is where you upload the details of an offsite provider. Let's start with enhancement. Select the preferred enhancement type and then say that you want to enhance some of the parcel. You will then return to the map screen where you can draw in the area of the site you want to enhance. You can always use the edit function to expand the chosen area right up to the edges of the red line. Going over will simply allow you to snap the area completely to the red line. Once you have made the change, you will see how the scores have altered. You can now experiment either deleting changes or adding new changes to your site until you achieve the required biodiversity net gain uplift and fully complied with the trading rules. In addition to drawing a particular area to enhance, you can always select to enhance the entire parcel for an immediate uplift. In addition, you can also try creation. This is where instead of enhancing habitats, you create a brand new habitat. It's done exactly the same way as intended works, but will, for example, allow you to add trees to your site. Once you've achieved the necessary uplift, indicated by having green boxes and fully complied with the trading rules, indicated by no red text, you can proceed. Alternatively, you can always use off-site units in order to get the necessary uplift, with our interface allowing you to simply upload any off-site sheets that you may have. Finally, there are a few questions you need to answer 
asking you about the nature of your site, whether or not you use local nature recovery strategies, whether or not the local authority believes your enhancements are significant, if you have a habitat management and monitoring plan, confirming that you have done this in order to comply with the BNG rules, and specific questions regarding habitat degradation, if appropriate. Once you've answered these questions and provided a brief description of your development and the street address, you will then finally be asked whether the local authority can share the information with stakeholders. When that is all confirmed, you have completed your BNG journey. You can now download your biodiversity game plan based on the DEFRA pro forma, a completely filled in and accurate biodiversity metric sheet, and a habitat plan document setting out a map of the habitats before and after your development. And if at any point your plans change, you can return and make changes directly by the tool. It's in your hands. Thank you for listening to our presentation, and we hope that you can make use of Joe's Bloom's Biodiversity Net Gain tool.